A very good evening. My name is Dr. Kamal Kumar. I head the medical affairs department at Ajanta Pharma. On behalf of Ajanta Pharma, I welcome all of the esteemed experts and delegates for Cardio Master Workshop Edition 2 uh, for today's meeting. So uh, today's agenda is interesting cases on hemodynamics. Speaker is uh, Professor Dr. S. Hari Krishna. Our moderators are Professor uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan and Professor Dr. Milind Fadke. Expert panelist for today's uh, uh, meeting is Dr. P. K. Goel and Professor Dr. S. N. Dautre. Along with that, uh, the postgraduate students are Dr. Pratik from LTMC Mumbai, Dr. Sunil Mondal from uh, GB Panth Hospital uh, Delhi, Dr. Abhik Haldar from SCBMC Katak, Dr. Umesh Tripathi from SGPJ Lucknow, Dr. Sandeep Sharma, SMSMC Jaipur. Our moderators, uh, Dr. Ajay Mahajan is professor and head of department of cardiology at GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. Dr. Milin Fadke is additional professor, department of cardiology at LTMC uh, and LTMG Hospital, Cyan, Mumbai. Uh, professor uh, Dr. S. Hari Krishnan uh, is associated with SCT IMST uh, Trivendra. And our expert panelist, Dr. P. K. Goel, is senior consultant cardiologist based, uh, based at Lucknow. And Professor Dr. S. N. Rautre is head of department at SCBMC Qatar. With this, without taking uh, much time, I would request our uh, uh, esteemed moderators, uh, Dr. Milin Farke and Dr. Ajay Mahajan, to kindly kickstart the meeting. Dr. Milin Fadke, sir, uh, over to you, please. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, all eminent faculty, panelists, and students. I think Dr. Ajay Mahajan, sir, is just shortly joining us. But uh, this is the fourth uh, program in this iteration of the Ajanta Masterclasses on spotters in cardiology. We have had programs on ECG, adult echoes, and pediatric echoes. And this is the fourth one on hemodynamics. Hemodynamics is very important from both your exam point of view for the students and for understanding basic concepts and building it up for your further cardiology cases and patients. And we are very, very fortunate to have this evening a very eminent panel. Dr. Hari Krishnan, sir, is going to be presenting the hemodynamics spotters and initiating the discussion and guiding us. And uh, Dr. Autre, sir, and Dr. P.K. Goel, sir, professors are very, very uh, uh, senior faculty, and uh, we are going to be learning a lot from all their shared experiences together. Dr. Ajay Mahajan, sir, as I said, will be joining us shortly. So, especially to the students, this is a request. The five participating students, please interact. Please try to answer the questions. It doesn't matter if they are wrong. The more you interact, the more discussions we can have and more everybody benefits. And even the students who are or in the audience who are not directly participating, please uh, enter your questions in the chat box so that the eminent faculty can address them, whatever questions you might have. So without much ado, I will hand over to Dr. Hare Krishnan, sir, for his presentation, and let's have a wonderful learning session. Thank you. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes, sir, it's visible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, dear students. Uh, First of all, I thank uh, Dr. Mahajan and Dr. Fadke for these uh, sessions and also thank Ajanda Pharma for initiating this uh, uh, forum. So, uh, hemodynamic tracings are uh, commonly uh, part of all discussions uh, during the exams. It is also during your cath lab uh, time and in the subsequent discussions also hemodynamic assessment and uh, discussion of the tracing is an important part. So when you are given an, uh, an and, uh, 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 tracing, so what you have to do is uh, you have to assess what is the type of the tracing, whether it is a pullback or simultaneous. I will, go, I will be going to those details. What are the type of waveforms? Uh, you just interpret the data, you discuss it, and finally uh, tell the diagnosis. So I have put the diagnosis in very small points because diagnosis is not that is the most important because you have to discuss it. That is what most of the examiners want uh, from you. So if you, even if you jump into diagnosis and uh, make it wrong, that creates a bad impression. So always uh, go slowly, see the tracings in detail, uh, and uh, give an in, give your interpretation. That is the most important thing uh, which I should tell you. So first of all, you should know what is systole and what is does. This use it seems sometimes very very basic, but sometimes I have seen people 
uh, making mistakes even in the final exam when you are asked what is systole and what is diastole. Systole is from the peak of the R wave to the end of the T wave. And diastole is the remaining part, end of the T wave to the peak of the R. So that is the, uh, uh, about the, the, to start with the basics. So there are three types of waveforms, three types of waveforms. So these are the atrial waveforms, which are left atrial, right atrial, and pulmonary capillary vents. The ventricular waveforms at, at the arterial wave. So how do you differentiate between these three? So this uh, tracing shows all the three. This uh, tracing shows all the three. Uh, the uh, atrial waveforms, which is so, this one. Can you see my uh, uh, cursor moving? Can you see that? Okay. So this is the atrial waveforms. Atrial waveform, we have two waves per cardiac cycle. We have two waves per cardiac cycle, two or three waves per cardiac cycle. The, the ventricular and arterial we have usually, there are exceptions, but usually a single waveform per cardiac cycle. An arterial waveform will not touch the zero, <coughs> but the ventricular waveforms will touch the zero. So these are the basic symbols. This, this is a very, very simplified format too. So there are exceptions and all. I will, we will discuss it subsequently. Always see the scale. The scale will be mentioned on the side. As you see, see here, you can see that it is from zero to 200. So that is very, very important because your pressure assessment and all will be depending upon that. So there, there are two types of pressure wave system. Sometimes it will be 20, 40 or 100, or it can be 25, 50 or, two, or 100 or 200 like that. So sometimes it can be 400, uh, the, the scale. So that is very, very important. You should not make mistakes. So always see the scale before going into any of the uh, any of the, uh, the the pressure assessments so always the the, the uh, most of the machines will give a mean this mean is an electronic mean for example in this uh, atrial pressure waveform you can see a and v waves are there it is 18 and 16 and the mean is generated by the machine generated by the machine that is 15 so the mean, sometimes a mean line will be there along with the <laughs> waveforms Speed of recording is also very important. So it can be recorded at different speeds, 25, 50, and 100. So usually you do always see the ECG before uh, saying that this is uh, bradycardia or something. So always see the ECG and make sure that sometimes the, the heart rate will be written on the screen. So some of the information can be obtained from the screen itself. So uh, next question, what you will be asked is how to record the pressure tracing ideal. That is one thing which can be asked. So the pressure waveform, you know, it's a periodic fluctuation in force per unit area. And most, ca most cath lab transducers will have a damned natural frequency of 60 to 70 hertz. And more than 120, the accuracy of picking up the finer waves are, uh, have become very, 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 very difficult. So, you know, I'm not going to those details. There is a sensing diaphragm. You have the Wheatstone Briggs principle, etc. I'm not going to those details. But you should know some of the, uh, the, the limitations of the the, the pressure recording systems which we currently use. What we currently use is the fluid field systems. Fluid field systems where your catheter, for example, you are doing a coronary angiogram, the catheter is connected to the pressure waveform, which through a tubing, it reaches the sensor. Sensor is the one which we place on the stand where the three-way and three-way is connected to the sensor. The sensor gives a uh, generates an in, uh, output and that will be processed and that will be shown on the screen. The advantages is that this is very cheap, it is disposable. The disadvantages is that it is there is a reduced fidelity, prone to noise artifacts, does not uh, measure the pressure at source because you are measuring the pressure at a distance and the power position of the sensor. There are solid state systems uh, where you measure the sensor at the pressure directly at that point. For example, the FFR wire, that is an example of a, a solid state pressure system. And this is, there is an example of a Miller pressure catheter. Somebody asks you, you can say that what is a so example of a solid state pressure system? The Miller pressure catheter is not uh, frequently used. And all pressures should have a baseline or a normal. That is a, called the phlebostatic axis. Phlebostatic axis is the fourth intercostal space mid-chest, regardless of head elevation, regardless of the position of the patient, whether it is fourth intercostal space mid-chest. That is called the phlebostatic axis. So what is calibration? Calibration is you open, you are calibrating into the atmosphere to make that your pressure system equal into the atmosphere, which is considered as zero. So where, what is that point? It is the point where the three-way or the stopcock is open to the atmosphere. So that is the point 
So that you have to reference it at that point to the plebostatic axis. The plebo that the fourth intercostal space should be at the level of the opening of the three way to the to that atmosphere. These are the two points that is a referencing and zero. So calibration, you know, the the, the uh, say pressure transducer should not be higher or should not be lower. It can alter the the pressure uh, uh, wave, the pressure pressure uh, the, the the pressure uh, values. How to record optimal pressure crisis? So zero the transducer at the level of the stopcock, mid just fourth intercostal space. This we have already discussed. That is the phlebostatic axis. Shorter and larger catheter is better. For example, a seven French is better than a fourth French. And optimal length of the tubing, if somebody asks you, you can say it is four feet. And always a rigid catheter is better. For example, a braided catheter is better than a softer catheter. Then you have to remove the air bubbles. And I should need not tell you, you must have done all those things. And if you have two transducers, both should be zeroed at the same level. And both should be checked. For example, when you puncture the artery, you open both the transducers and show uh, that these both these tracings overlap. Then only you are making sure that both the transducers, the the uh, level of the transducers, the uh, damping of the two transducers are at the same level. And now you should always flush the catheter uh, when your contrast is in the uh, system; it will dampen the pressure. So always uh, flush the catheter with saline before measure. So when you record pulmonary capillary wedge, you have seen that there is a significant <laughs> respiratory variation. So when will you measure when such a variation is there? You have to measure at the end expiration. At the end expiration. That is very, very important. And you, some of the cath lab machines have a respiratory sensor also. You can use that. Otherwise, you have to do it manually. So how are the uh, usual pressure tracings recorded? So we'll come to the first tracing. Uh, can somebody answer this? This is a pullback tracing. So uh, can somebody analyze it? One of you. Simple. Nothing great. Abhik. Yes. Sir, this is a pullback tracing from uh, pulmonary artery to uh, right ventricle. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so the pulmonary artery uh, peak pressure is around uh, 80 and uh, diastolic pressure is around 40. And, uh, and uh, sir, uh, RV systolic pressure is also equivalent. So there is no gradient between the RV and pulmonary artery. Very uh, good, very good. That is it. So it is a what? What? What is the diagnosis? Hemodynamic diagnosis? Pulmonary arterial hypertension. Very good. That is a pulmonary. This is a, so. This is a pullback tracing from a. This is an example of a pullback tracing from pulmonary artery to RV. So this is a, this is another tracing. Can somebody else? Who else is there? I am not seeing those people. That is why. Yeah. Umesh, can you analyze this? Uh, the usual trace. Yeah. So this is a push-in uh, tracing. Very good. Very uh, good. Push-in tracing. It, it's uh, it's uh, showing a. Uh, uh, it's showing the waveform from RA, then okay. uh, towards uh, RV, okay. and. Uh, uh, then uh, we move on to the arterial pressure testing of pulmonary artery and then uh, the wedge pressures are being recorded. Okay. So now you can see all the four, three types of waveforms. You start from RA, you go, there are two waveforms per cardiac cycle. Um, there, there is no ECG, but uh, there's a single waveform in the ventricular and arterial. And when you again go to the pulmonary capillary wedge, it is equivalent to the left atrial pressure. So there are two waves per cardiac cycle. So this is a flotation catheter which goes from the RA to the pulmonary capillary wedge. So this is a push-in tracing. So this is a, uh, can the uh, next person analyze this tracing? It's a simultaneous pressure tracing. Yes, simultaneous. So, 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 so yeah, you can continue. Yeah. I just call some a, random names. Yeah. So this is a simultaneous pressure tracing Very of uh, the aorta and uh, uh, left ventricle. Very and uh, it's it's showing a significant gradient between uh, aorta and uh, between LV and aorta. Uh, how much is the gradient, the, sir? Uh, it's around uh, sixty, sir. 60. The gradient, the peak systolic uh, pressure, uh, peak systolic pressure in uh, LV is one forty, and in the uh, aorta is eighty. The left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, sir. The gradient of okay. around sixty. So the type of uh, type of obstruction we will subsequently discuss. Okay. Now we will go to the atrial waveforms. Now we know the, uh, how to identify the atrial waveforms. 
so atrial waveform the p wave uh, will uh, be followed by the a wave and the t wave will be corresponding to the v wave approximately these are all approximately uh, uh, the a wave and the there are there is a c wave which corresponds to the r wave and the t wave is uh, will follow the v wave will follow just follow the t wave and you have the x and the y descents so we'll come to the each of these tracings when we discuss subsequent cases so we have the ra and the la pressure tracings ra will normally the a wave will be more in ra and the v wave will be more in la v wave will be more in la and the norm usually the la pressure is slightly more than the uh, ra mean because the uh, lower compliance of the left atrium lower compliance of the left atrium and why uh, somebody will ask you why the la is uh, lesser less compliant than the r you can say that the la is relatively thick stiff and less compliant and uh, right atrial volume is slightly more and left atrium is decompressed by the stiff pulmonary veins compared to the vena cavae <laughs> which are thinner the adjoining systemic left ventricle uh, acts up to the uh, stiffness of the left atrium all these points you can tell to uh, to uh, to support your uh, 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 support your uh, uh, this thing that uh, the left atrial compliance is uh, more so this is the next tracing can this is a right atrial tracing can somebody analyze this yeah pradeep can you do this we can hear you are muted please unmute or somebody else yeah, yes yeah uh, please go so pressure tracing is of the lm is right the yes sir, where the ra mean patient is around 20 uh, yes sir let the ra pressure test be showing and uh, so i am what the they have sir written actually the waves but are written can comment on the waves okay sir yeah. oh, okay, sir there is a tall a wave which can oh, yeah, be seen over there yeah yeah the, the tall a wave which can be easily seen it uh, can be because of the uh, what are the conditions where you will get that tall is a tall a wave why, why, why do you say this is a wave why why do you say this is why do you say this is a wave uh, sir it's uh, just uh, just after the p wave of the ecg okay Oh, then just after the P wave of the ECG, that is why it is A wave, and it's a very prominent A wave. What is a A wave? It is around 30 millimeters, no? Yes, sir. Very prominent. Sir. So, yeah. what are the conditions where you will get a large P wave? Uh, it can be because of the uh, PS. It can be because of uh, uh, pulmonary artery hypertension, or uh, uh, then uh, yes, sir. Most commonly, the tricuspid stenosis or the pulmonary artery hypertension. Anyway, because the RB uh, obstruction, RA RB obstruction there. say so, i want to av valve obstruction you can have ts yeah. or ms or a decrease rv compliance uh, for example yes. a ps or rvh yeah. or ph you can get uh, prominent av and uh, you can get a canon av when the rv ra contracts on a closed tricuspid valve yes so and then somebody will ask you what are the conditions where you get an irregular canon wave regular canon regular canon waves are seen in a junctional rhythm and an isorhythmic av dissociation irregular canon waves you see in ectopics uh, complete heart block ventricular tachycardia ventricular pacing all these situations you get an irregular canon okay dr rautre and uh, dr goyal anything you have to add please join uh, no it's okay actually they have to look particularly waves that is important yeah. so mean, mean will come by the machine itself but yeah, that, I mean. yeah you have to see the a and b waves and accordingly you have to find out what may the possibility that they have to think in mind So okay. it's, uh, say say B wave would have been prominent, then uh, the diagnosis would have been different. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. So can somebody analyze this tracing? Next person. Who is uh, who is taking this up? So uh, yeah, somebody who uh, should try so this. this. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this is a uh, it. So this is an atrial. Uh, this is an atrial pressure tracing. Okay. Uh, at a low, uh, at a higher speed. That at is a higher speed. Yeah. At a higher speed, uh, showing uh, a prominent uh, V wave. Okay. Uh, v wave reaching around thirty. Which are the waves? Which are the waves? Which is this wave? Which I am. My cursor. Can you see? So it's A waves. 
wave. What is this wave? C waves. C wave. Very good. This is yeah. C wave, and this is what? V wave. C V wave. So A, C, and V waves. So uh, this. What is the? What is the? Uh, what What is the pressure? What is the? Uh, gray, what is the? What is? Uh, what is the? How many millimeters? A V C. Sir, uh, A wave is around thirty. Uh, Okay. And uh, V is around thirty-eight. Uh, uh, okay. So it is a it is a L A pressure is normal elevated. No, no L A pressure is sir uh, elevated. Elevated. L A pressure is significantly elevated. So you take a full cardiac cycle like this, you can see A, C, and V. So that no, and it is elevated. Okay. This is the next tracing. Can somebody analyze this? It is a what what type what tracing it is. Everything is written there. Mm -hmm. Everything is written. Yeah. So the atrial or ventricular or arterial? It's atrial. 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 Atrial means what atrial. can atrial. atrial can be left atrial, right atrial, or it can be a pulmonary capillary wedge also. Okay, this is a pulmonary capillary wedge. So okay, so what what does it show? So it what shows a prominent prominent A wave. Uh, yeah. Okay. Both waves are actually prominent. We cannot say which wave is prominent. But what is the basic thing? What is the pressure actually? What is the pressure? Level of the pressures. It's uh, elevated, sir. More around thirty. Around thirty or twenty-four, twenty-six. I uh, mean, around twenty-six. You can say. Yes. So it is elevated pulmonary capillary vents. So what are the situations where you get the elevated pulmonary capillary vents? Sir, so in. Uh, Severe MS. Severe MS. MR. Severe. MR. MR. What? Which wave will be prominent? The V wave will be more prominent. V wave will be prominent. Here, both waves are the same. Okay. Okay. So we'll discuss it subsequently. So any condition which increases the left ventricular, uh, whether it's a left ventricular inflow obstruction or a elevated left ventricular end diastolic pressure, it increases the increases the pulmonary capillary vents. So how will you confirm that? Uh, it is a pulmonary capillary vent that will be the next question which is asked so what are the conditions which you satisfy to because you are getting a pressure you are go gone from the pulmonary artery to the pulmonary capillary vent position so you have to there are there is some uh, findings which say that this is pulmonary capillary vent so what is what are the five things so one is the pulmonary capillary vent mean is less than or equal to the diastolic pa pressure okay you know the pa pressure because you are going from the pa to the vent The tracings are the atrial pressure waveform. The arterial, the pulmonary artery will have a single pressure waveform. Changes to a two wave uh, per cardiac cycle waveform. Fluoroscopy shows a stationary catheter after inflation because if it is a pulmonary uh, balloon wedge catheter, free flow is present within the catheter. That is called the flush test. And arterial blood. If you obtain a sample from the distal portion, if you obtain sample from that wedge position, you will get a what what sample? What sample will you get? What will be the approximate saturation in a normal patient when you wedge? Ninety-eight percent. Ninety-eight, more than ninety-five. So it's a normal arterial saturation you will get. So these are the five things you uh, say that this is to confirm that is a pulmonary capillary wedge position. Okay. Yeah, this, yes, this is important because you will have to know properly wedged or not. Because sometimes people, say, yes, if they properly wedged, the fluoroscopy will show the stationary, it is not moving, it is not free flowing. And all these the criteria will find out from one to two waves, and uh, uh, at this uh, pattern will change. So yeah. this is very wet or not? That is important. Yeah, yeah, because this is uh, because sometimes if it is not properly wet, you will get a spuriously high uh, p uh, wet pressures. So you will think that the mitral regurgitation is significant. Like that, you have to sometimes you know you uh, have only this pulmonary capillary wet to take some decisions. So we have to be very very careful. Make sure that you are getting a correct wet position. This one. This is an example. Can you just discuss? So uh, this is a pull. This yeah. is a pullback uh, uh, tracing from uh, pulmonary capillary wedge uh, into uh, the pulmonary artery. Okay. Why do you say that this is a pulmonary capillary wedge? So because it has got uh, two different waves. Uh, Very good. And it is okay. already written there now. PCW. Hundred. That is already written. That is also a clue. Yeah. Then 
That's uh, a single and waveform in the subsequent. And what what about the pressures? Is it normal? Is it high? So the pulmonary artery pressure is uh, the systolic pressure is fifty, and the mean will be around. Uh, Uh, around okay, you can say it four. approximately. These are all just for just for discussion. Now you can say it approximately. No, so it will be thirty-five, sir. So it's around moderate pH, sir. That's present. Okay. And, okay. Uh, What is the pH wedge? Uh, pH wedge is sir also uh, elevated. Elevated. Uh, so uh, so it most likely can be a case of uh, uh, MS or severe MS or LV increase LV. Okay. Increase. So the pH the high the rise in pulmonary pressure is due to what? So because of. Uh, 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 left left atrium outflow uh, uh, in oh, whatever uh, it is elevated uh, elevated elevated left atrial pressures yes. right. okay that is we will discuss that subsequently how we do you how do how will you assess pre capillary post capillary we will just discuss that now we will go to the ventricular waveforms so you will get the two wave, these are two ventricular two waveforms uh, can you it is written there rv and uh, lv so what are the differences between rv and lv pressure rates rv pressure tracings tracing will be triangular and yeah. the lv pressure tracings will be a, a somewhat rectangular why why it is so any any idea so because of in, uh, increased dp by dt in uh, increased dp by dt dt in so low low dp by dp by dt in uh, in the right right side okay this is the low dp by dt And uh, we sometimes we may uh, get the, uh, to know from the magnitude of the pressure, but there can be situations where there uh, there RV can be suprasystemic also. What are the situations where you get a suprasystemic RV pressure? The so PS within uh, PS within PS. Impact. And one more situation. KSD with PH also you can get a yes. suprasystemic RV pressure. There are other situations also. We will discuss it subsequently. Okay, so low dp by dt. That is the reason for the triangular shape. So ventricular pressure tracing. So you should know three things. What is the? What are the three things? You should know the systolic pressure. You should know what is called a dip diastole. We should know the uh, the most important pressure that is called the end diastolic pressure or the ventricular LV EDP. That is one of the very important pressures. So what is uh, what? What is LV EDP? Uh, ventricular end diastole. But it's very very important because it indicates the the ventricular diastolic. properties so where is the LV, the lv edp measured it is measured at the point called the c point or the z point so where is the z point so you drop a line from the peak of the r wave down to the ventricular pressure the point where it touches this r wave touch where it touches the ventricular pressure that is the point called the c point and that is where you have to measure the and there are difference of opinions uh, different schools of thought but do you remember it like this so it is coincides with the r wave okay that is the ventricular end diastolic pressures now we will go to the arterial waveforms so arterial waveforms no you know single uh, pressure waveform per cardiac cycle you know the diacrotic notch etc you should know the peak uh, pressures uh, systolic and diastolic we will come to all those uh, discussions subsequently so this is these are these are two pressure traces the, the the white and the red so can you tell me which is uh, the central aortic pressure and which is the peripheral pressure so white is the central aortic pressure and uh, okay. red is the peripheral aortic pressure why why what happens to when the pressure wave forms uh, travels to the periphery so when it travels to the periphery the uh, uh, pressure gets delayed means the recording gets delayed a bit and there is also said peripheral augmentation For which the uh, peak uh, pressure, means uh, peak systolic pressure, gets raised, and also said the diacrotic notch uh, gets uh, um, reduced and uh, delayed. Sir. Yeah, it gets delayed slowly, comes down, comes down, finally it gets delayed. So these are the three three pressure tracings. One is the aorta, second <coughs> is the femoral artery, and third is the dorsalis pedis. You can see what happens. It's a delayed upstroke. There is a delay in loss of amplitude and absence of the diacrotic notch. The systolic pressure increases. A decrease in the diastolic pressure also occurs. This is due to the decrease in arterial compliance and the reflection and oscillation of the blood pressure wave. These are the reasons. Tracing. Now we will go to some other tracing. Now we have seen the basics. What are the uh, trace uh, pressure wave forms available and all we have seen. Now we will go to the some tracings for analysis. So can somebody analyze this? This is to highlight a point. So somebody can analyze this. 
who is doing that sir, uh, yeah this is the pressure tracings which are uh, uh, showing the la pressure tracings and the simultaneous pressure of the lv and okay very uh, good uh, there is definitely uh, uh, la gra- the gradient is between there so looks like because the la mean is around uh, 14 some so there is yeah some minim- yeah, minimal gradient is there gradient LV, LA, LV, minimal LV. minimal gradient is there but that is LV not the point so yeah. are the tracing same actually sir it looks like a pulmonary artery tracing rather that's okay that's okay pulmonary artery tracing or it is written as a different colors that is uh, uh, slightly differently written waves, that's okay so what is happening to the uh, uh, one is an atrial pressure wave form the other is a ventricular pressure wave form there is no confusion regarding that so yeah. what is happening to the third wave what is the third wave sir it's a junctional rhythm so no, what is the third wave which is a normal wave p q r s t relation normal p q r s t relation is seen only in the third wave you understood no yes okay so we must all look at the third wave is only sinus sir third wave is the sinus wave that is Best only wave. sinus beat that is only sinus beat so you have to look at the this is a this is a why i wanted to uh, make you understand that always look at the ecg before uh, before looking at or commenting upon the tracing so this is the only wave only uh, tracing where there is a p wave and the uh, a wave and the v wave the others are all what is happening there is a junctional rhythm and a, and a prominent v wave prominent no no no, no. What, what is happening junctional rhythm what is this wave it's a canon canon kind of wave no what is this ecg wave retrograde p wave retrograde, retrograde p wave. that is contracting on and that is producing a large canon wave okay yeah. okay so that is the, you have to always look at always look at the always look at the ecg this is to make make you understand that it, and i will show you another trace so what is this what is this tracing first uh, five beats mm. Mm. So the first five beats are pace beats sir okay so what are subsequent beats Uh, sir, subsequent beats are self rhythms. Sinus rhythm, sinus rhythm. Patient's own beat. So why the pressure is low? What are the reasons why the paced beats are uh, producing a lower pressure? <clears throat> What are the reasons? No, that is not difficult. Just think. No, some actual contribution. atrial contribution is one second is where, where is it paced is it pacing the ventricle or the atrium hard wing ah uh, wherever it's in the ventricular pacing because it is a broad qrs so it can it, it is a it is a disynchronous contraction probably these are the two reason there is no atrial contraction there is a disynchronous contraction that is why the pressure is on generated is low okay understood no you understood no yes yes okay so this is another very interesting tracing you can discuss this. very interesting tracing not a, not very easy but just uh, see this uh, this is one of the tracing which we published to show some phenomena yeah then does it show the discuss the tracing what are those arrows and what are, what are, what what does it represent sir uh, is this a case of a, a dynamic left ventricular outflow tract obstruction uh, with the, the vpc showing reduction in the pulse pressure uh, mm. but not actually there is no dynamic we don't, we don't know the lv you no know? there is no dynamic obstruction this is a patient who had a primary angioplasty and where is vpc like kisne bola why do you say vpc vpc is a early beat are these beats early these beats are not early so it cannot be vpc Is what is happening to those what are those arrows arrows point to what sir has correctly picked it up what what is it 
arrows are pointing arrows to pointing P wave. Yeah, P -wave. arrows are pointing to P wave. Now, P -wave. okay. Now you can say. Now you can say what is happening to those. There are no arrows in those. Which which are which those three beads? The arrows are missing in those. It does not have the P wave, so that so. Yeah, so the P waves are the P waves are missing in those uh, uh, three beads. beads, and that is why the pressure is low. This is to show that the P wave, the atrial contribution is very important in generating adequate pressures. So this is just to show that this is one of the traces. What is what is this new complex coming from? Can you tell? Yeah. Where is Bendigo, this new complex please. coming from? Right, this is a. So from right ventricle RV, sir. From uh, it's a hey, ventricle. Is it a is it a ectopic? Is it a pace beat? Is it a tachycardia? What is it? Huh? I don't know. Yeah, what is it? The guys are the ones, no? Sir. Uh... So non-sustained ventricular tachycardias eh? oh. arising from the RV. Why should not I broad? No, 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 it's not broad. Close to the P wave, and you know, I don't know. Doctor Hari Krishnan will tell us what is happening. Is there a pacemaker? Sir, this is a prime, this is a, sir, this is a primary angioplasty we were doing. We just got this tracing. At that time, I, I thought that this will be interesting. So. Uh, this is a no. So this complex is coming from where? I was wondering. Yeah, I, th I think this, this could is, be an uh, idiomatical. Either I'll tell you. Either this is an accelerated junction, but you know some yeah. accelerated rhythm, which is overtaking the P wave, the correct, sinus correct. rate, and the, the when the P and the QRS are still coinciding, you your pressures are still okay, and as it overruns the P wave and becomes on its own, <laughs> then the pressure comes down. Exactly, sir. Exactly. That is what that is the point which I wanted to highlight. Yeah. So when, wherever the P wave is there, irrespective of the QRS complex, whether it is broad or narrow, that is uh, producing a significant uh, uh, pressures equal unto the normal what is happening in a sinus peak. Sometimes something similar could happen with the pacemaker also. You know, if the escape rate of the pacemaker and the P wave rates are very close together, and you have a hysteresis or something set in or a variable AV interval. That you know the uh, the pacemaker tries to take over at that overlapping rate, and then the P and QRS may not be coordinated, and then your pressure will be lower when the P wave is not good. Okay, sir. Thank you. So we will go to the next group of tracings. Okay, what is it? Somebody can. So this is it. Uh, yeah. This is simultaneous uh, LV aortic tracing. Okay. Uh, showing a significant gradient between the LV and aorta. Okay. Suggestive How much, answer, is, uh, How sir, much uh, is the gradient? 180 minus uh, 110. So around a 70 millimeter. Gradient. Okay. What type uh, of uh, gradient it is? Sir, uh, so there is a delayed uh, upstroke in the aortic tracing. So okay. probably this is a fixed stenosis at the valvular level, sir. Thank you. What type of gradients are you asking? Peak to peak gradients. Peak, peak to peak gradients. Peak. Okay, very good. That is a most likely a fixed aortic obstruction. Okay, so these are the three uh, types of aortic gradients: A, B, and C. Can you tell me what what does it what does A represent? What does C represent? And what does B represent? A is a peak to peak gradient. Very good. And uh, B is an instantaneous gradient. And peak C instantaneous gradient, where will you obtain? So in echo, sir. During echo. Peak instantaneous gradient, you will obtain during echo. That is peak usually more than the peak to peak gradient. And uh, is what is C? Mean gradient, sir. Mean gradient, that is that you calculate and you by the pressure tracing uh, in the cath lab. By uh, counting those coils. Okay, so this is this is another tracing. Um, second tracing shows an intervention had been done in the same patient. So can you discuss this? This is a uh, simultaneous pressure tracing of uh, uh, left ventricle uh, and uh, aorta. Okay. Uh, the LV uh, peak gradient is uh, peak systolic pressure is two fifty eight, 
and aorta is 108 showing a gradient of around uh, 140 okay and uh, what is uh, what is that grade is it a fixed or dynamic so this is a uh, uh, fixed gradient sir because of okay. uh, uh, slow okay. up slope very good so, so that is a right fixed aortic right probably we will give it as a valvular aortic syndrome something yes, has sir. been done and uh, this is a second tracing after some time so second uh, second trace is uh, the initial in the initial part there is no what uh, is it L- what, what is a type of tracing is it a pullback simultaneous all those so it's a pullback uh, it's pull a pullback tracing sir okay it's a pullback tracing and we are uh, moving from the lb uh, into the uh, proximal uh, into the ascending aorta and okay. uh, uh, we can see that the pulse pressure has widened so okay. most likely okay. after the uh, it would it was uh, aortic stenosis and pul- uh, the balloon dilatation was done and it has led to uh, arc very good excellent okay so um, uh, so what uh, there is no significant gradient there is no significant gradient or around around 20, uh, around 20 mm gradient only now or so very uh, the gradient has disappeared but there is a significant amount of aortic regurgitation so can you another point is that Uh, when the, the pressure tracing just after the the lv and uh, the pressure this pressure this pressure at this point and the pressure at this point is slightly different is there is a sl- slight increase in pressure from this point to this point what is that called do you have carabellus? any idea carabellus no no okay not carabellus and it is not because of obstructions carabello is some the carabello is when something uh, the catheter is across the aortic valve so that's peripheral augmentation sir as we are moving from the proximal no, no, to distal no, 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 we'll what is that human? something is recovered yeah yeah correct pressure what is recovery. that pressure recovery yeah they are called pressure recover it's called pressure recover okay carabello i will come to what subsequently carabello is different okay so these are two pressure tracings the patient is having lvot obstructions uh, so hmm. what what are these so this is uh, a simultaneous pressure uh, tracing uh, on the left side uh, of okay. the L, uh, left ventricle and the uh, aorta okay hello both are simultaneous lv and lv and aorta so, so on the is? left side it is uh, rapid up stroke which suggestive of uh, with a spike and dome like appearance so uh, okay. most likely so, dynamic uh, lv or flow tract obstruction and the second one second one is sir <laughs> fix fix obstruction fix so this is an example of a dynamic and a fixed the first is a spike and dome pattern second is a slow rising so this is an example of a dynamic and a fixed obstruction what is this can somebody discuss So this is simultaneous uh, tracing of uh, LV okay. and aorta okay. with a uh, VPC in between. Okay. Uh, after the uh, uh, extra systole, there is a increase in uh, cardiac LV contraction cardiac output. So the LV pressure has increased. Okay. But uh, so the aortic pressure uh, has uh, uh, decreased a bit, sir. But. it's almost the pressure has not decreased yeah it's almost same sir so pulse yeah. pressure is same so this is fixed aortic obstruction sir very good excellent i expected you to tell uh, it is a bro- broken bro brown wall but you correctly said it is a fixed obstruction what is the most important very good so what is the this is the most common mistake people make in the exam so what is most important is uh, pulse the, the pulse pressure subsequent to the ectopic beat for subsequent to the ectopic beat the pulse pressure should be low then only it is a fixed up uh, it is a dynamic obstruction okay pulse pressure should fall in the post ectopic beat that is the most important finding so what is this one this is the broken barrow the pulse pressure is. this is the broken barrow where you can see the uh, why bro- why what is the reason for broken barrow brown wall So with increase in lv contraction the outflow uh, uh, stenosis increases dynamic it is a dynamic stenosis sir obstruction so the cardiac output decreases and the peripheral uh, bp no the outflow obstruction increases that is due to because it is dynamic that is the reason for the decrease in the pulse mm-hmm. pressure okay so that is how you differentiate between a broken uh, the fixed and a dynamic obstruction now we will go to the next set of tracings okay so what is this 
so uh, this is uh, a pull back tracing uh, from the proximal aorta to the uh, from the uh, proximal aorta to the distal aorta okay. and uh, uh, it shows a peak to peak gradient from proximal to distal of around okay of around uh, 30 so it's most okay. likely coarctation of aortic coarctation aortic coarctation okay agree okay what is this one something i don't know so post intervention yeah please go ahead not by not uh, difficult at all pull back tracing from uh, proximal aorta to uh, distal aorta okay. uh, in the first plot that is in the pre angioplasty slide there is a gradient uh, okay. so uh, this is a uh, coarctation of aorta is again a coarctation probably sure. with the stending for post uh, angioplasty okay what is this one So this is the pullback tracing. Yeah, please, please go. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So this is the pullback tracing. Yeah. Pullback tracing from uh, LV to uh, aorta, sir. And, okay. uh, and there is a gradient between the proximal aorta and uh, in the distal aorta. So this is supravalvular uh, AS. Supravalvular AS. Very supra-valvular. good. This is supravalvular aortic stenosis. Okay. Supravalvular. So what is this one? so this is a uh, uh, this is a pull back tracing from the uh, uh, dis- from the distal uh, left vent this is the initial part is a left uh, ventricular tracing and uh, the mid part is also ventricular tracing because of the same diastolic uh, pressures uh, but there is a gradient between the uh, proximal and the uh, from distal and the proximal so this suggest of some uh, subaortic uh, stenosis and uh, sir the and then there is a, uh, the catheter has passed to the Uh, proximal aorta from the lv and there is no gradient between uh, okay so this is subaortic so this is subaortic or subvalvular so these are the three uh, type of stenosis one is the subvalvular first one you can see that the first two uh, segments are the ventricular uh, tracing the second one is aorta so the gradient is between the two ventricular type of tracing so that is a sub both are in the ventricle so that is below the valve here the gradient is between the L ventricle and the aorta. So the 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 gradient is at the valvular level. Here the uh, pressure difference is between the two type of arterial tracings. So that is at the supravalvular level. That is how you differentiate. You understood, no? So yes. when the pressure tracings both are the ventricular, it is subvalvular. When the gradient is between the ventricle and the aortic aortic type of tra- uh, tracing, it is at the valvular level. And when both are at the uh, aortic or uh, arterial type of tracings that is at the supravalvular level okay what is this one we'll go are going to the next group of tracings so this is simultaneous pressure tracing between the lv and the la showing okay. uh, uh, showing gradient between uh, uh, no, identify tracing. the waves what is this wave So this is a uh, a a wave. A wave. This is a B wave. No, no, no. no this no, is C, not C. C, C, C. Immediately C. close to the R wave, it is C wave, and this C is wave, the C wave. B, B wave. B wave. B wave. Okay. So what is LA pressure? Is around around uh, more than twenty twenty twenty. Okay. And what is L LV ED LV end diastolic pressure? Around ten. Uh, 10... Yeah, around ten. So eight. what is the gradient? Uh, so around 12 12 14 ah okay so this is a cv this is lvd so gradient around mean will be around 20 22 lvd is around 10 so it will be 12 mm gradient between the la and the lv okay what is the possible diagnosis mitral stenosis sir. mitral stenosis okay what is this tracing again so this is a uh, simultaneous uh, lv and la uh, tracing Okay. Uh, showing a uh, showing prominent uh, so showing a uh, la la pressure of mean of around uh, uh, 30 30 to 40 between 30 to 40 sir okay and, uh, uh, there is prominent what is uh, a and v what is a and v sir a is uh, 
around uh, a so uh, a is uh, around uh, 30 and uh, v is uh, around 60 sir okay so there is prominent uh, v wave okay uh, so what is it uh, severe mr severe mr but there is a gradient now between la a lv and la can this occur yes, in mitral stenosis so yes sir so the gradient is of around no you said mr so no, so the prominent v waves are right told that it can be because of no sorry telling this much of gradient you will not get in the mitral regurgitation so there must be something okay. else so, so, yes it's mitral stenosis plus mitral stenosis and the what i what why this is a patient with a pregnant patient with a young patient with mitral stenosis in juvenile mitral stenosis the complaints of the cause of the issues you can get a very high v wave uh, v waves So this is a pregnant. This is also actually a pregnant patient with uh, very high V waves. So uh, another point I wanted to highlight was the V waves can be prominent in mitral stenosis um, without significant mitral regurgitation. She was taken. This was uh, this patient was taken up for a BMP and she had a very good result. So th this is what I wanted to highlight because V wave, a prominent V wave in mitral stenosis is not very uncommon. uh dr outre or dr goyal you can also contribute because this is very commonly seen no v waves very prominent yeah it's okay it's actually yeah okay so this is another uh, tracing can you just discuss so this is a simultaneous uh, uh, lb and la tracing sir Okay. and uh, as has been mentioned so uh, the gradient was the gradient is around uh, uh, 20 in the initial part uh, and uh, uh, in the second part the gradient has reduced but the uh, v wave is still remains prominent so no, is there a gradient in the second part no sir the gradient has reduced sir. the gradient has yeah, there is no gradient this is a no, kissing no. tracing now this is one of the very successful result bms you don't have any gradient in diastole okay so no gradient in the diastole So it's a very successful result BMA with no significant uh, mitral regurgitation. Okay, so post BMA tracing, can you discuss? So again, this is a uh, simultaneous LV left ventricle and LA uh, tracing are so simultaneous. Okay, uh, and uh, there is. Uh, Minimal, minimal. There is sir almost no gradient between uh, LVDP and uh, and diastolic. There is no diastolic gradient. Okay. But uh, the V wave seems to be very prominent, sir. Okay. What is the situation? So it's a post BMP patient, most likely uh, the complication of the procedure was that MR had developed. Okay. So acute MR. Usually, acute. Usually, when when there is a uh, severe MR, post valve tear, there will be no gradient across the valve, mo mostly. Uh, significant gradient may not be there across the valve. The V wave will be very very prominent. Oh, so you see oh. the V. Yeah, you can see the V wave. No, it has gone above hundred. Yes. Sir, how come? Is, how come is the pressure is the still same, sir? Look, if if the having a severe MR and the systolic pressure has not dropped that much. There is no. It is acute. Very acute. No, there is no. It, this is just immediately after the BMA. There is no. Uh, Uh, you will not find the pressure drop immediately see the uh, the um, v wave no it has gone above 100 yeah, 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 so what, all, what yes. all situations in what all situations will you refer the patient for a uh, my immediate mitral valve surgery what is the indication sir acute severe mr with uh, hemodynamic compromise no no what is a This patient definitely should go for surgery because the V wave is hundred. And what is the criteria to say? What V what what level of V wave will you send the patient for surgery? Ah, uh, very urgently or uh, we can wait. V wave gradient more than three times the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure. I mean, no, it depends upon the systolic pressure. If the V wave is more than fifty percent of the systolic pressure you have to send the patient for surgery immediately you need not should not wait immediately you should go patient will suddenly slowly deteriorate will they will develop hypotension pulmonary edema and patient can collapse so you should uh, send the patient for surgery immediately and what are the acute mr hemodynamics 
basically the lva edp will be very very high uh, the cardiac output uh, will be decreased uh, and the left atrial compliance and the, this is uh, comparing ac acute versus chronic mr we will not uh, go to those details here the ventricular and diastolic pressure will go very high in the acute situation okay now we'll go to the other group of tricycles yeah what is this so this is a pullback tracing pull from pulmonary RV. artery to rv okay uh, showing a significant gradient so this is pulmonary valve stenosis significant no, why, gradient why, why, why do you say this valve why is not subvalvular Why is not infundibular? Sir, because, sir, because the chamber has uh, changed uh, from the diastolic pressure in the pulmonary artery is ten, uh, and from there the chamber has changed and came into RV. So the uh, gradient is between RV and pulmonary uh, artery. Okay. So it's a valvular level. So it's a valvular level. Yes. So this is a RV RV pullback. The from the pulmonary artery it ch changes to the right ventricular pressure tracing. So that is a pulmonary artery stenosis. So what is this one? So this is also a, a pullback tracing from a pulmonary artery, uh, from the uh, RV outflow and uh, then to the uh, right ventricle, sir. There is, uh, sir, there is uh, no gradient between uh, the pulmonary artery and the infundibulum, but there is a definite gradient between the uh, RV and uh, the infundibulum. So, so most likely, sir, this is uh, so this is infundibular pulmonary stenosis. infundibular pulmonary stenosis because you are seeing a, a gradient there is no gradient between the pulmonary artery because the pulmonary artery tracing because there is no it is not touching zero this is uh, infundibular because it is touching zero and you can see the uh, there is a, there no gradient here but the gradient is actually in the uh, sub below the uh, valve so that is a sub in, infundibular stenosis okay next we will go to this uh, what is this So already we have discussed yeah yeah this is already discussed you can just pull uh, back tracing from pulmonary artery to rv uh, okay. with uh, raised pulmonary artery pressure of okay. around 80 by 40 okay so this is a pulmonary hypertension okay. situation pulmonary hypertension situation so what is this one So this is a RV tracing, uh, RV trace. I mean pulmonary artery tracing, sir. Pulmonary artery with uh, with uh, diastolic uh, runoff is there. So, PA uh, pulmonary artery hypertension with PR. Pulmonary artery hypertension with PR. What is the pulmonary artery? You know, pulmonary artery the diastolic pressure will be will not be that uh, high. You know, yeah. so uh, this is a pulmonary hypertension situation hypertension okay so with a gradient uh, with a uh, pulmonary pressure of 100 and a diastolic pressure of 40 so now we will uh, see some of the uh, new things in pulmonary uh, what is a uh, new definition of pulmonary hypertension what was the previous definition mean pulmonary pressure greater than 25 was the previous now previous. it has uh, decreased to 20 more than 20 mm mercury so, Yeah. So uh, there was a. Uh, and exercise was removed. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah. Exercise. exercise was removed. And the normal PA pressure is fourteen plus or minus three point three. That is the criteria. And the nineteen seventy three Parliament Hypertension Symposium gave that value of uh, more than twenty five. But subsequently, it was found that many studies have shown that it doesn't uh, is not correct. That is why it was corrected now to mean PA pressure more than twenty. One mean PA pressure more than twenty. So this is you should know. Okay. Now uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, what is it mild, moderate, and severe depending upon the uh, some uh, some difference uh, of uh, uh, terminologies are there. When it is twenty to thirty five mean, people say it is mild. Thirty five to fifty, somebody say it is forty five mean more than fifty is termed as severe uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. so i will tell you show an example of mitral stenosis and discuss the different types of pulmonary hypertension okay so when there is a mitral valve disease what happens when there is an elevated la pressure there is pulmonary venous hypertension 
and the pressure is just like that transmitted to the pulmonary capillaries. Okay. And that will be transmitted to the pulmonary arteries. So there is a passive transmission of the high LA pressure. So what happens when there is a passive transmission? What happens to protect the pulmonary capillary? What happens? The pulmonary artery constricts. So reactive pulmonary vasoconstriction. So the initial part is a PVX or a pulmonary venous hypertension. In response to that, there is a reactive pulmonary vasoconstriction that is contribute to pulmonary arterial hypertension. And when it is chronic, for example, in a mitral stenosis, when it, this lasts for a long time, what happens to this? There's a structural changes in the pulmonary vasculature and that will lead on to pulmonary vascular disease, which is permanent change. So these are the three components, passive transmission, reactive pulmonary vasoconstriction and a chronic pulmonary vascular disease. So in, a, in mitral stenosis, uh, when a BM is done or a mitral valve replacement is done, what happens? the LA pressure will immediately come down. LA pressure will immediately come down. So the passive pressure will reduce. So I will show you an example. So pre-BME, the mean PA pressure was 25. The systemic PA pressure was, uh, the systolic PA pressure, sorry for the mistake. Systolic PA pressure was 100. So BME was a very good result. The LA mean came down to 8. So the passive pressure is how much? 17 has just come down by, it should come down by 17. So the expected PA pressure is 83. Agreed, no? You agreed, no? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So passive, so what happens? But we, when we measure, it is only 63. What has happened? There is an immediately, there is a reduction in the vasoconstriction around 20 millimeter has further reduced immediately. So the PA pressure is we are getting 63. So immediately, but the reduction in PA pressure is not immediate. So it will continue for, it is said that this vaso reduction in vasoconstriction will continue for weeks or even months. So when you measure at uh, one month, you see that the PA pressure is 45. So it's a long-term fall in vasoconstriction. So again, further 18 millimeter is reduced. But when you measure at six months, again, it is 45 only. It is not further reducing. That is due to what? That is due to the structural damage which has occurred due to the persistent pH which persisted for few months or years. So this is what, these are the three components of pulmonary hypertension. This is illustrated with an example of a mitral stenosis to make you understand. Then you should know two, three things. What is transpulmonary gradient? What is transpulmonary gradient and what is diastolic pulmonary gradient? So, transpulmonary gradient is PA mean minus pulmonary capillary wedge mean. If it is more than 12, it indicates pulmonary vascular disease. But now, the recent guidelines say that diastolic pulmonary gradient is more important and more accurate. And if it is more than 7, it indicates pulmonary vascular disease. Pulmonary vascular disease is the pulmonary, that what the last component which we said, pulmonary vascular disease due to the structural damage. That is what is indicated by the pulmonary vascular disease. Okay. Uh, so can you discuss uh, this tracing uh, in, in on the basis of what we have discussed uh, with this pulmonary hypertension things? So this is a pullback tracing from pulmonary artery wedge to pulmonary artery. The okay. uh, mean pulmonary, the pulmonary wedge pressure is 25. Okay. And the mean pulmonary pressure is 32. So okay. transpulmonary gradient is uh, 7, which is less than 12. So okay. there is a passive pH. Passive pH. This is due to this pH is due to what is the diastolic pH gradient? DPG? DPG is 0, 25. Zero. So there is no, uh, this is due to the, just due to the elevation of the LA pressure, the is the increase in the PA pressure. So this is a passive PA. This is a PVH related PA, pulmonary artery pressure, uh, increase in the pulmonary artery pressure. Okay. So this is a transpulmonary gradient is less than 12. This is a passive PH. Okay. What is this one?
discuss in the same lines. Instead of pulmonary capillary wedge, what is given? You see, when you say that is PA, you receive LA, then PA. LA. It, it is instead of the pulmonary capillary wedge. What are we looking at the pulmonary capillary? We are looking at the left atrial pressure only. So, a left atrial, what is a left atrial pressure? LA pressure uh, peak is uh, 12 and diastolic is 0. So, it's yeah, normal. Yeah, mean, mean, mean is around 6 or 8. 6 or 8. Uh, what is the what is the uh, PA pressure? But the yes, sir, PA pressure, uh, the systolic is 100 and diastolic is around 40. Okay. So the mean is around 60. Yeah, approximately what is it? So uh, this is the case of sir uh, pre capillary pH sir uh, PB. Yeah, it's a it is an example of a LA mean is 5, PA pressure is 60 mean. Sorry. So what is it? It is a fixed uh, pulmonary vascular disease. It is a, sorry, it is pulmonary vascular disease because the uh, diastolic pulmonary gradient is high. The uh, transpulmonary gradient is also very high. This is a pulmonary vascular disease. These are the two types of one is passive, the other one is a pulmonary vascular disease. So, what is this tracing? The pulmonary artery pressure 40 millimeter gradient, 40 millimeter scale. The pulmonary artery pressure of uh, with the mean pressure of around uh, 14. Okay. I will give you a clue. This is a post operative patient. It's a post operative patient. This is done to, to find out whether we can do, we can go to the next stage. So Fontan, so post Fontan. Very good. So post Fontan. Oh, not a post Fontan. It's a post. Post BDG. Post BDG. Post BDG. Post BDG. Post BDG to find out whether you should complete the Fontan. So what is the criteria? complete the fondant, we should have the PA pressure should not be more than 15. Okay. If it is more than 15, we should not complete the fondant. So, that is it. So, what are, this is a non-pulsatile PA pressure, no? There is not much pulsatility. So, where are the, what are the situations you will get a pulsatile gland? Anybody? So, so there is a CVT. Yeah. 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 So tell me. I didn't hear you. When there is still an RV outflow is patent, then there is a for forward flow. You can get a pulmonary artery pressure. When there is significant um, uh, AV valve regurgitation, also you can get. Okay. Now we will go to other group of tracings. So this is a femoral artery pressure. So what is this? Femoral artery pressure. Is it Hilson? Yeah, please go ahead. Discuss the tracing now. Just uh, go on discussing. Just go on reading the tracing. It's arterial right femoral artery at 200. Just discuss what is happening. So this is a, some variations. Can you comment on that? Sarah has given a clue. Yeah. What is happening to the pressures? Sir, it's uh, uh, so it's uh, uh, varying, sir. Very. Uh, How much variation? Yeah. Is it a respiratory variation? No, sir. Why? Why can't? 
So usually the right thyroid symptoms are more affected. No. 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 <laughs> So no, can no, you get a situation very common, not very uncommon situation? No, this one. There are some conditions in which even the left-sided patients can widely vary with respiration. Yeah, very acute. It's an emergency. Temporary. Yeah. So discuss the tracing. What is this? It, uh, it, uh, it pulses alternate, sir. No. It's not alternance, no. Yes. What is the classical pulse of uh, cardiac tamponade? You're getting all the difficult tracings. We thought this would be a simpler one for you. Yeah, yeah. You were answering all the <laughs> difficult ones. I was wondering why, why they were uh, the very difficult ones. They were very easily answering. Okay. So, so what is it? What is it called? I couldn't get it, sir. Please. No, you. This pulses paradoxes. No. What is pulses paradoxes? Which condition will you get? See, look at the systolic pressure variation during respiration. The maximum and the minimum. See the difference. The same thing that you see on the blood pressure with the blood pressure cuff, you are seeing in the femoral artery tracing. And there is a more than 10 millimeter difference uh, in the arterial pressure tracing with the respiration. You consider it as a pulses paradox. So which way, where, where, what situation? Pulses paradoxes. Okay. Yeah. So this is another uh, same pre aspiration, especially we uh, aspiration. So there is a simultaneous RV and LV trace. Can you find out what is happening? So there is a ventricular uh, interdependence cell in very good. Uh, ventricular no, no, no. Can you discuss that ventricular interdependence? What can you discuss that? Yeah, what is yeah, happening in the third, third and the uh, fourth? Uh, what is it? Third and fourth uh, uh, wave wave. Yes, sir. In the third wave, sir, with inspiration, the RV pressure is increasing and simultaneously the LV pressure is decreasing. Okay. While uh, the reverse is happening in the fourth. Okay. So what is this called? Ventricular discordance. discordance. Ventricular discordance. It's called ventricular discordance. And what is happening here? It's an arterial tracing. Same patient, arterial tracing. The same in the same in the meaning pulses paradox. Same in the paradox. Pulses paradoxes. Not pulses, pulses paradoxes. paradoxes. It is the equivalent of ventricular interdependence. You are seeing it in the great arteries as well. Yeah. yeah. See, see yeah. here you saw so what 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 did you see here? The RV pressure is increasing, LV pressure is decreasing. Same thing you are seeing in the Pedicular. artery. The lower is the pulmonary artery. The upper is the aorta. Same thing you are seeing. That is also the same. Uh, Arterial discordance. This is an arterial discordance. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So this post aspiration, what has happened? The discordance has decreased. The discordance has disappeared. Now there is concordance. Okay. They are moving so in phase, no? Yes. Moving yes. in the phase. Moving in phase. So this is concordance. Once we have aspirated, the arterial and the concordance have it came back to concordance. Okay. Okay, now we will go to a different set of traces. Uh, pre pericardial, uh, uh, Dr. Bhatki, can we go? Uh, just tell me when to stop. Yes, sir, we have another 10 minutes, sir. Oh, okay. okay. Just tell me when to stop. So we have, we have some more tracings to discuss. But yeah, <laughs> tell me when to stop. Okay, so uh, pre pericardial aspiration, RA, that is a. Uh, and subsequently, post pericardial aspiration are these are the two tracings. So, can you tell us what is happening? This is a, this is a uh, one, one particular uh, hemodynamic uh, uh, process is shown. What is in, that? Uh, pre pericardial uh, aspiration in the upper uh, chart, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, there is a prominent uh, wide descent, wide descent. So, that's visible. Upper tracing, there is no prominent descent, no? 
What is the pressure first of all? The so mean pressure around twenty five. Ah, is it high or low or normal? Our our pressure of twenty five. Our pressure, sir, high is high. Sir. High. Okay. Is there any respiratory variation? Yes. Sir. There is some respiratory variation, but is there any prominent waves, descents, etc.? Actually, this is a very classical sign. If you are asked the uh, sign, you will immediately tell the answer. It's the reverse of your analysis. See, there is a pericardial effusion. The pericardial effusion has been tapped. Now, prior to tapping, you have an RA pressure tracing. Post tapping, you have the same RA pressure tracing which has been recorded. So, so what has changed? Uh, Pre-aspiration, there was definitely there is this uh, obliteration of the Y distance, which you can definitely make out on the post-aspiration, which was not. in the first tracing and uh, eh with the blunting good? blunting of the white scene was there in the first tracing which and what is a oh no what is the pressure was it come down to normal uh no sir it 24 it has come down to how much 18 20 20 and is there yes. any respiratory variation now yes sir There is, there is there is respiratory variation. Second, the lower tracing, like upper one. Y yes, Pratik. See the upper tracing again. There is very prominent respiratory variation. Where do you get any respiratory variation in the lower tracing? See post aspiration, the mean pressure has not fallen significantly. It should fall below ten, right? Ideally. Yes. Sir, the respiratory variation is no longer there, and what has yeah. happened to the descent? Maybe because of the constructive physiology, both the waves become prominent X and Y. Possibility is there. Is the pericardium restrictive or is the pericardium uh, supple? Is there it is restriction? restriction it is restrictive, sir. The pressure has not uh, decreased. If it is restrictive, how will respiratory variation get transmitted to the intrapericardial pressure? Yeah, I mean, you see this fall that is happening here. Why is this fall happening in the lower tracing? After tap, the pressure is slightly less, but uh, still it is high. There, there is some fall, which suggests that maybe it is only tamponade. It is not. Uh, It is not uh, constriction. I don't know, uh, Arik Krishna. Yeah, sir. It is a, uh, that is what. So initially, it's it's there is permanent transmission to happen into the uh, pericardial space will only happen when there is uh, no constriction. Means in the sense there may be high pressure yeah. because of tamponade. Yeah, sir. This is an FUC constriction, sir. That is what. Yes. So yes. high, high initially R I pressure, loss of V V, inspiratory fall in pressures. Uh, so initially, it is uh, tamponade. But when it was aspirated, uh, persistent the pressures come down slightly six millimeters, but still it was high. The uh, descents have appeared. Uh, there is no significant fall in the inspiration. There is an underlying constriction. So this is a if you see constrictive physiology. So yes, Agrista Sandhuveda's criteria, which have been described to diagnose a physical constrictive pericarditis. Yeah, yeah. Okay, shall we move to the next? So, if you see constrictive failure of the RI pressure to decline by at least fifty percent to a level less than ten, uh, as Doctor Fatke has put it, after pericardial pressure to reduce to zero by aspiration. So, post radiation or malignancy or post TB, uh, they may need pericardial therapy. Okay, we'll go to the next uh, group of uh, tracings. Four tracings are there. Just discuss this. I think we'll stop uh, with uh, not two. Yeah. first is ra second is rv third is pa and fourth is uh, the both lv and rv yeah please please discuss first ra comment on the ra pressure uh, in the first one sir there is uh, blunted x descent but the y descent is uh, very prominent Okay. Plus, there is a respiratory variation. 
No, it can uh, be seen. What about the pressure? Uh, pressure as such, it is very high, no? Uh, yes, yeah. sir. The pressure is uh, around twenty-five, sir. Okay. It's elevated. Okay. What about the airway pressure? Sir, RV pressure is sir also uh, reaching around uh, sixty with seventy. Uh, uh, it's reaching around seventy, fifty, sixty, seventy, uh, or with, uh, more than that. Yeah. Yes, sir. So with there is uh, 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 respiratory variations also visible over here. And what about the end diastolic pressures? The end diastolic pressures are also are uh, uh, elevated, but not elevated. going beyond fifty. Uh, no, it is going. The, how much is it? Ten, twenty, around thirty. No. Uh, so around thirty, and it it is less than one third. Uh, if thirty, uh, what about the PA pressure? The PA pressures are also uh, elevated to around eighty. Okay, PA pressure is high. What about the LV and RV? Okay, so there is a prominent wide descent. RV it is elevated. There is a dip and plateau. PA pressure no, is more than fifty. That is around seventy to eighty. You are getting there. Are, there is no significant ventricular interdependence. Okay. So this is suggestive of what? RCM. Prostatic cardiomyopathy. Suggestive of the prostatic cardiomyopathy. Okay, I think we will stop at this. Uh, okay. I will show, stop with this one on 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 more. I think this this is the last. I think. Yeah. Okay. These two will show. One more taping, please. Now you have shown it. Please complete. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what is this? Just to take time and uh, 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 read it. So this is a simultaneous LV and uh, aortic pressure tracing. Ah, okay. Uh, in the middle part, there is a, a tachycardia, and mm. uh, and because of that, there is some. Why there is tachycardia? Uh, so, uh, there is uh, junctional tachy PSVT sinus tachycardia PH sinus no, tachycardia. No, this is taken to demonstrate something. No, so. We have asked the patient to do something, and we record simultaneously. Some maneuver, some maneuver. Yeah. Then uh, cardiac uh, cardiology Al consultant asked about maneuver. <laughs> you should think of something. So there is Alsalva maneuver <laughs> done Al because the pressure is uh, increased. Uh, there is uh, variation in the pressures also being seen. So. No, no. Just see what is happening. Very what variation in the pressure? What is happening? Is it an yeah. adequate Alsalva maneuver? What is happening uh, in the tracing? Is it adequate? How will you know that it is adequate? What is the dip diastolic? How much dip diastolic has elevated? Elevated by forty. Forty. So is it okay? Is it a good one, Salva? So good well, sir. I know you expect a increase in forty millimeters. That is what you do. And what is happening in the LV aorta and LV? The gradient has appeared between uh, aorta and LV. Very good. Sir. So what 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 condition it is? Dynamic obstruction. Dynamic. LV obstruction. Dynamic. So this is what is Valsalva maneuver bringing out a dynamic LV obstruction. Yes. This is one of our patients um, where we demonstrated a demonstrated a. LV outflow gradient in the patient. You can see all those. Now, once you release, there is a bradycardia. All those things are there in the tracing. So you said correctly, there is tachycardia. It's a typical Valsalva maneuver where uh, you, when you train the patient, now you have to train the patient few times. Then only you will get a very good uh, response. Okay. So this is a Valsalva maneuver bringing out the LVOT dynamic LVOT obstruction. So last uh, uh, tracing, I will show and finish. Okay. <clears throat> Can you tell me what all uh, hemodynamic? This is the tracing which we showed in the first picture. So, what all the uh, what all uh, hemodynamic abnormalities this patient has? It's also one of our patients. 
but initially there is uh, uh, what what is the what is the uh, there are two tracings one is aorta so there is simultaneous uh, pressure tracing of uh, lv and aorta uh, showing a left ventricular uh, outflow track obstruction okay fix uh, and dynamic so slow uh, right i think it's, it's, it's fixed sir. fixed fixed sir. okay and what is happening the, in the other what that. is the, what is the pull back yes a pull back from uh, and there is a slide back from where to where from uh, sir from l uh, it's a pull back from distal aorta uh, from proximal aorta to the distal aorta no the and other the, one is the, other one is static the catheter is in the ascending aorta it is static there is no pull back in the ascending aortic pressure the aortic pressure aortic pressure is the same only the What white tracing is, is a pull back the yellow yes, tracing yes. is static yellow setting is stat static what is the pull back is in the white pull back is from where to where lv to ll <coughs> lv to ll so in which condition where there is a we can pull back from lv to ll ast so by transeptal puncture or by so what is the ll mean around 15 sir 15 and lv ed around um, 0 to 5 5 very low so 15 what is that lv ed 5 lv uh, ll mean 15 16 You already have an aortic stenosis. So what else does this patient? Mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis. So there is a pullback from LV to LA, indicating a mitral stenosis, and there is an aortic stenosis also. Okay. And you somebody said about Carabello sign. So what is the equivalent of uh, what is happening in the aortic pressure? What is the what is happening? So there is slight increase in the systolic. Uh, slight decrease. Pressure. So increase, sir. Increase. Well, when when is the pressure increasing in the aortic valve? Aortic pressure. What point? So just uh, when when the it be done from uh, when the catheter is being pulled from proximal to the uh, distal. When the catheter is pulled from the LV to the LA. Okay. LV to the LA, there is an increase in the aortic pressure. This is due to what? So there is mitral stenosis. There is an obstruction produced by the mitral balloon catheter. So that is why the pressure is increased. So this is not carabellosis. Carabellosis is described for which pressure? Yes, it's the aortic stenosis. Aortic, aortic. So this is an equivalent of a, something called a, a, what? What you can call it as a mitral carabello or something because it is uh, the mitral valve is obstructed by the catheter. No, once you pull back, the aortic pressure is increased. Okay. You know, we do also see this when we put the balloon across the mitral valve. Sometimes the systolic pressure slightly goes down. Correct, correct. Right. Yeah, that is how we uh, we realize that the already it has crossed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll stop with this. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other comments from Dr. Outre, Dr. Goyal, Dr. Fatki, Dr. Mahajan? Uh, and actually very well um, covered and most of the parts you have covered and very last was they were very tricky they were thinking only out of stenosis there that they are not looking at whether this uh, out of is static but only ventricular uh, tracing is moving yeah that was just for uh, some in yes, case short that is not usually short. Short. these are uh, these are all difficult to so <laughs> i think it will not be asked so this is uh, just for an academic investigation Don't worry that if you don't answer those. Uh, yeah, those this is very good. <laughs> to PK Goel sir, some comments from you, sir. Please. Sir is there, Doctor PK Goel sir? I think uh, he is there. I think he is there. He is there. uh you can also ask majan sir also majan sir is there majan sir sir can you hear us dr majan sir yes i can hear you but i am just traveling and that is the why uh, i cannot uh, i am not able to uh, show my face to you <laughs> but today i enjoyed a lot uh, there are very very important tracings for uh, difficult tracings lv basic tracings and hemodynamics uh, today i i also learned a lot 
uh, it was very good uh, session for all pg students uh, sincere thanks to dr hari krishna sir uh, i'll request dr milin to uh, do words of word of thanks yes uh, yes I, i second what sir has said it was today as if that we had we were reading a textbook of hemodynamics and within such a short time and sir has started right from the basics starting from fluid dynamics how to record pressures phlebostatic axis and he has taken you step by step to all the possible tracings that you might encounter in your cath lab work as well as in your exam so i think nothing has been left uncovered so even if you you know rewind and rewatch this one lecture and just you know re revise it i think that is enough uh, practice for you both for your exam and for understanding all your concepts in hemodynamics i don't think there can be greater praise for sir than this because uh, it's it's a wonderful lecture i have attended many lectures on hemodynamics but this stands out among one of the best and uh, we are also very grateful uh, to dr rathre sir and dr pk goel sir who made interventions which were very very uh, useful and you know uh, help the students understand the concepts better and overall it has been a very illuminating session and uh, in this short time that we had one and a half hour a lot of things have been covered i hope the students found it useful and we are thankful to all the students who have participated abhik pratik umesh all of you all five of you and please continue interacting because that is the best way to learn when you interact it stimulates us to give more you know so please do continue interacting and i hand over to the agenda pharma team for their final comments thank you once more dr hari krishnan sir dr rathre sir and dr pk goel sir and please participate with us for many such programs in the future for the students absolutely thank you thank you, thank you. Dr. Hari Krishna, sir. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Hari Krishna is a very good teacher. I actually attended one of his class on CSI banner. That was an oximetry. Mm. And ox yeah. Yes. yeah, that was also very nice. He started from the basics and covered everything. Thank you. So I think, sir, really I'm taking this privilege to, to convey our thanks to Dr. Hari Krishna, sir, as well as Dr. Rautre, sir, as well as Dr. P.K. Goel, sir. I think it's a fantastic program. Quite illustrious, stressing on hemodynamics. It's a really good opportunity for all our postgraduate cardiology students as well as DNB students to get something. I think the best thing, uh, the pearls, you know, you can take for your better enrichment of your knowledge. And I hope you are really enjoying the sessions. And next uh, <clears throat> week also going to come out with a very important topic on coronary angiography. So I request all uh, wholeheartedly, all my, uh, you know, uh, students, please participate. Make this initiative successful for your betterment. so that is my our key interest and key you know desire to make this roll out this program so i request all of them and not only that i also give thanks to our uh, students today's program and uh, please uh, give your best uh, participations make it more interactive really is a kind of feast program i say what a scientific feast actually for all for all of us so once again thanks sir uh, minister as well as ajay mahajan sir so thank you sir have a good night sir Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Namaste. Have a great night. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.